undercover Carson, secret agent. Operation Death Ray, an assignment in Rio. It was strange how important dancing had become in all the darkness of the death ray search. The all-knowing scientist Chaco claimed that the Cossack was coming to Rio for the big carnival. And from what we had gleaned, this chappy was a dancer of some sort. Apart from the dancers so many of our rivals led us, we had the French-Italian breathtaker Fecarelli. Anyone who could watch that lovely body at work could not fail to be bewitched. I say this, I suppose, because I want to cover up for the blunder I made in her apartment. As the city seethed outside with the mounting excitement of the carnival, just two days to go, Faye donned her festive fancy dress, and she made just about the most eye-catching harlequin I've ever seen. She suggested a dance, one of her little whims, and uh, who was I to refuse? She also suggested I might abandon the pipes for the moment and draw on a cigarette. How charmingly she lit it for me, and how divinely she danced. However, well, uh, the cigarette was drugged, and I awoke, I don't know when, to find her bending over me. More surprises were to follow. Oh, Monsieur Bruce. <coughs> Poor Monsieur Bruce. Oh. Oh. I stroke the head. Mm. That better? No, oh, head like lead, I'm afraid. Poor boy. Yeah, but I'll do stroking myself. It <coughs> is no use for you to try. Ah, I see. As they say in the Westerns, roped. Roped? Hogtied. I do not understand. I'm bound up. Ah, oui. Oui, you are, Monsieur Bruce. Fay, my dear. Just what sort of dance did you call that? The cigarette dance. <laughs> you did not like it? The dance, yes. The cigarette? Not really. <laughs> yes, it was drugged, of course. It was. <sighs> oh, dark outside, eh? You sleep for many hours. And you've taken off the Harlequin costume, I notice. Oh, but I keep that special for the carnival. And uh, by your reckoning, what are my chances of seeing the carnival? I am sorry, Monsieur Bruce, but you must wait another year. So your instructions are to keep me out of the way till the carnival's over? Oui. Chaco's instructions? Oh, please, do not mention that name. But Chaco's forcing you to work for him, even though you yourself are a freelance agent. Come on. I do not know. You cover up many emotions, my dear, but you show fear at the mention of his name. Believe me, Monsieur Bruce, I do this to protect you. Chaco says I must kill you. Already I've warned you once. So, the general idea is to keep me here a prisoner, to use a cloak and dagger term, till the fun's over. Till Chaco gets what he wants and skips down. We, oui. I do this to help you. Hmm, and self a little at the same time. It is for the best, believe me. Oh, what a woman you are. Yet there's something strange in the way I fell into this trap. But how is it strange? Hmm, you seem to have everything arranged. Musical box for dance, costume, drugged cigarettes. I have. Yet we only met by accident in the Rio Branca. It was not by accident. Coincidence, then? No, no. I know you are out seeking for me. Oh, how so? After you go from the apartment of Monsieur Sir Giles, I make the telephone call. Ah, so that's it. He hesitate, but then he say you look for me. Hmm, pity we met. Oh, you are cruel, Monsieur Bruce. <laughs> and if you had these ropes around you, you'd have other ideas. Yes, you wrap them well, you know. Oh, nothing special. No, but elementary training for undercover agents, and that's us. Tell me, Fave, what the blazes are you doing in this business? I cannot... For all your duplicity, you know, you have quite an adorable nature. Someday, perhaps, I explain. But now, I will bring you food and drink. Now, how about a pipe? I take them all from you, just in case. But what in the name of heaven could I do with them, with, with hands and arms tied? There is the one that shoot the arrow, Monsieur Bruce. I put that in your mouth and next, whoosh, the arrow got my heart. Oh, perish the thought. And then there is the one that make the radio call. No, no, you let Monsieur Sir Giles know where you are, perhaps. Uh, seems you know too much about my pipes. Right, then, there's the one that becomes a very effective pistol. And that I also keep away from you. But apart from that, I do carry a pipe or two to smoke. And I'm dying for a smoke. Of the others, then, which one you like? Well, um, Big Briar. Then I not give you that. Why not? Because when you ask for it, I know there is something he can do. I give you perhaps the plain one? Mm, dashed poor smoker, though. That all you get. 
Ah, you've got me in a spot, all right, fair, but... Oh, well, better than nothing, I suppose. I fill it with tobacco. Then I help you to light it. And then I get you some food. Oh, do not worry, Monsieur Bruce. I'll look after you. But you cannot get away from me this time. Of course, creatures like Fakerelli just shouldn't be allowed in the espionage business. But it's an age-old custom of rival nations and factions to throw in such distractions. Even bound and tied as I was, lying there on the carpet, my head propped up with cushions, I couldn't help but admire the woman. In spite of the innocent-looking appearance of the pipe, she looked it over carefully before allowing me the smoke. She left me puffing away awkwardly, and I could hear the clatter of pans and dishes out in the tiny kitchen. However, that happened to be the very pipe I wanted. When duly heated, the bowl and stem drew apart. The exposed inch and a half was razor sharp. I got it to work on the ropes. My hands were free, and I'd reached the other pipes on the sideboard, grabbed my pistol pipe when... <gasps> Monsieur Bruce! Stay where you are, Faye. Do not shoot! Do not shoot! I will, Faye, unless you get down on hands and knees and untie my feet. Oh. Do you hear me? Oh, you do this, Monsieur Bruce. Uh, pipe, you see? Smoldering on the carpet. Oh, you trick me. Uh, about time I started to catch up. You should not do this. What I'm doing is to protect millions of innocent people from the ravages and horror of a death ray, should it fall into the wrong hands. Now... You know how lethal this pipe can be. Oh, oui, oui. Then do as I say. Untie my feet. Oh, oh very well, Monsieur Bruce. But I make you such nice food. Oh, French. And you do this to me. I get the orders to kill you. But instead, I only try to protect you. Yeah, that's got it. I'll kick the rest of the ropes aside. Now, oh, upsy daisy. <laughs> and no crocodile tears. But I am most upset, most. Yeah, same goes for me. Now, Faye, I'll gather up pipes and then we'll be off. I'll not go anywhere. And you're going where we can question you. And this time I mean question. Oh, you hurt me. That'll be nothing to what you'll get from our <laughs> Angelo if you don't speak up. This is not like you, Monsieur Bruce. Now, there come times, my dear, when a man must hurt even the thing he loves. Now, come on. But where we go? You'll find out soon enough. But remember this, Faye. Make any attempt to escape or attract attention, and I'll be obliged to call upon this pipe. <laughs> I'd hate to do it, but I'd have to. Now, come on. My dear Mademoiselle Corelli, must you keep on carrying on like that? It does rather distress us. Yes, it does indeed. It is because I discovered that Monsieur Bruce is, is not at the heart kind and gentle. He is so rough and so harsh to me. Oh, it hurt me more than you, Faye. Oh, you just say these things. You destroy everything. Oh, no doubt. Uh, but, Sir Giles, what about Angelo? Quite incapable of leaving his bed. Uh, still thinks he's going to die? Yeah, I fear so. I hope he die. I hope all of you die. Now, Faye, <laughs> Mademoiselle Carilli, this just won't do. Keep your hand from me. Much and all as I dislike being harsh with such a charming person as yourself, I must insist that you pull yourself together. Carson and I are determined that you shall give us certain information. I know nothing. Yeah, but you do, Faye. And we've reached the stage when we'll stop at nothing, my dear mademoiselle. You make everything most difficult for me. We realize that, and that's the idea. Now sit up, and let's get down to business. Uh, first, where is my handbag? You bring it along, Monsieur Bruce. So, here we are. Uh, Carson. Uh, oh, everything all right, sir. I've been through it. Gentlemen. Uh, let's hope I can make amends someday, but what are you after? Only my cigarette. Give me a light. A uh, box of matches here. Allow me. Uh, there we are. Now, for the question. First and foremost, uh, Charco's whereabouts? I uh, not know. Then how do you get in touch with him? He... he get in touch with me. How? I not know. Now, stop chewing at that cigarette. That cigarette, give it to me. <gasps> Carson, what a fool I've been. I know nothing, Monsieur Bruce. Nothing. She's passed out. Of course. Had one of those drugged cigarettes tucked in an ordinary packet. Great heavens, no. And she'll be out to it for hours. What are we to do now? Wait. That's all we can do. Ah. But she knows plenty about Chaco. Ravishing creature that she is, Sir Giles. She must be forced to talk. And Angelo must be fit enough to do it. Madonna was the word both Sir Giles and I agreed best described Faye's face as she lay there. In our anxiety to find out about Chaka, we were bypassing the true background of this French-Italian beauty. She didn't stir, 
But to make certain it wasn't some brilliant piece of acting, we had no alternative but to mar her lovely wrists and ankles with strips of sheeting. Friday night was the carnival due to break out on Sunday. From the balcony of the Davenport apartment, the sweep of the Copacabana beach and its boulevard made an arresting sight. They're parading the boulevards in their hundreds, Carson. More floats coming into the city, too. Some Some of the locals already in fancy costumes. And Jove, Carson, what costumes they wear. You know, there's a large proportion that remain the same from year to year, but each year there's some special type featured. (laughs) Even Highlanders on one occasion. Oh, that's not yellow. Trying out again. We'd better have another look at him. Yes, right, sir. I can't make out why he's in this condition. It wasn't a heavy blow, yet he seems to have thrown in the towel. Oh... Ah, uh, Excellency, uh, I'm close to the end. Oh, this is a lot uh, of nonsense, as I keep uh, telling you. Uh, no, Excellency, because I request the good spirits to tell me something to help you in return for my life. In a day or two, uh, you'll be uh, as sound as a bell. But they tell me. What's this? The spirits, Excellency, they already tell me. He's wandering, uh, well, Hold it, cousin. Uh, no, uh, old fella. This one, this one they, you call the Cossack. He is also the one who does the dance. That's so, and it's practically all we know about he him. He comes to the carnival to dance in the in the costume of a Cossack. In the uh, costume of the Cossack? Uh, of course, that's it. Uh, Every year there's a troop of Cossack dancers. Uh, this last scientist, this last hope of ours, uh, is one of them. Indeed, Excellency, the spirits tell me this in exchange for my life. Angelo! Uh, Angelo! Great heavens, Carson, I... I think he's going. While Fecarelli had put herself beyond our questions for the time being, it seemed that Angelo was sinking lower. He had solved a vital matter for us. Yet it was hard to imagine getting along without his faithful help in Operation Death Ray. (laughs) 